In March of 1933, when FDR had been in office for just two weeks, he signed an executive order prohibiting all persons in America from owning gold. He also directed that those who continue to own gold, other than in jewelry, be incarcerated and fined. He claimed the authority to do this because he claimed it was necessary to save the American economy, then in the throes of a Federal Reserve-generated depression. This would, of course, become the Great Depression, in large measure because virtually everything FDR and the Congress did to address it in the next 12 years actually made it worse. FDR's order prohibiting ownership of gold was even worse than it appeared to be. FDR's advisors told him that gold would fetch about $35 an ounce in the open market. So he signed a second executive order directing that all Americans sell their gold to the United States Treasury for $25 an ounce so that the Treasury could resell it to foreign banks for $35 an ounce and collect a quick and enormous profit. After the same advisors remind FDR, reminded FDR that under the Constitution only Congress can write the laws, he relented. But he angrily denounced the Constitution as born in the, quote, horse and buggy era, and that he asked for and received legislation from Congress that mirrored his executive orders, and he signed that legislation into law. Then, the Treasury began to force people to sell their gold. It would be another 40 years before Americans would legally be able to own gold. Now, I recount this sordid tale because it is a paradigm of government today where both Congress and the President use the powers of government that we have given to them to do things to us that we have never authorized them to do. In FDR's case, his behavior was not only unconstitutional, since only Congress can write the laws, it was also criminal, since it constituted theft. And FDR's language, of course, was reprehensible. He mocked the very document, the Constitution, which he had just two weeks earlier sworn to uphold, protect, and defend. Of course, FDR did many other things to the Constitution, including threatening to neutralize the votes of Supreme Court justices with whom he disagreed, and refusing to defend Pearl Harbor when he knew what was coming. And that made him one of history's great monsters. But it is his cavalier willingness to reject the basic structure of the Constitution that enables us to draw comparisons to our present-day ills. President Obama's favorite hero among his predecessors is FDR. Though he, too, took an oath to uphold the Constitution, he, too, has directly assaulted it. He has killed at least two Americans, one a Muslim cleric because he felt the evidence of the cleric's guilt in encouraging others to violence was overwhelming and the danger of more harm was imminent. The other was the cleric's 16-year-old son, about whom he has claimed to have no evidence of guilt of anything. He did this even though the Constitution he swore to uphold says that, quote, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. He started a war without the approval of Congress, even though the Constitution says only Congress can start wars. His Justice Department now wants to prosecute you for fibbing about your age or your weight on the Internet at the same time that the Justice Department wants legal permission to lie to you and to federal judges about whether documents you seek from the government truly exist. His Department of Agriculture tried to impose a tax on the sale of every Christmas tree even though the Constitution makes it clear that only Congress can impose taxes. I think you get the picture here. When presidents violate the Constitution, the supreme and fundamental law of the land, and when they get away with it, that establishes a very dangerous precedent for future presidents to exceed their predecessor's behavior. That's the basis for my argument, that without the Patriot Act, which sacrifices personal liberty for a false sense of safety. There would have been no Obamacare, which sacrifices personal choices for a false collective good.